In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, once again, we call to mind our sin and beg the Lord's mercy, his rich and abundant. You raise the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You intercede always for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we celebrate in mystery the solemnities of your Son's resurrection, so, too, we may be worthy to rejoice at his coming with all the saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul's escorts had taken him to Athens, they came away with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. Then Paul stood up at the Areopagus and said, You Athenians, I see that in every respect you are very religious. For as I walked around looking carefully at your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown God. What therefore you unknowingly worship, I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything. He made from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek God, even perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Since, therefore, we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone, by human art and imagination. God has overlooked the times of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed, and he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began to scoff, but others said, 
We should like to hear you on this some other time. And so Paul left them, but some did join him and became believers. Among them were Dionysius, a member of the court of Areopagus, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. After this, he left Athens and went to Corinth. The word of the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all the truth. 
He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have a, a wonderful brother, younger brother, the baby of the family, who uh, showers me with his love and his uh, gifts. And one of the gifts he gave me was uh, when I turned 50, which is a little over 20 years ago, uh, he gave me a cruise. He and I went on a Mediterranean cruise from Istanbul, and we wound up the last few days in Athens. It was my only trip to Athens. Uh, they were getting ready for the uh, Olympics back then. Uh, the city was a mess. The subway was being dug up, or the subway was being installed or putting one in. Of course, as they dug up, they found artifacts they had to stop. It was just, just dreadful. Anyway, uh, I remember exactly the day. It was the Saturday, I believe, I say exactly. I'm pretty sure it was the Saturday that we were there. Maybe the Sunday. <laughs> anyway, no, we left on Sunday. Saturday, I guess it was. Uh, and uh, we, uh, our hotel was at near the end of what is the current uh, pedestrian walkway. It, left, it was quite large, both in terms of uh, length and width. All the boutiques and upscale stores were there. A beautiful little church was there. In fact, I remember we stopped there uh, on the 22nd of November. It was the Feast of the President, the equivalent of the Athenian Forum rather the, the equivalent of the Roman Forum in Athens. When Paul was there, it uh, probably looked uh, m m much more similar to what we experienced on the pedestrian walkway, uh, without the electric lights, of course, and at all the modern conveniences, but nonetheless a bustling and busy place. Uh, and it was there that the uh, Athenians had built, as Paul noted, this altar to an unknown god. I remember the Greek uh, system of, uh, of gods was they kind of covered every event of human life. There was a god for everything. A god for this, a god for that, a god of the hunt, a god of the fire, and so on. Uh, each had uh, singular and multiple responsibility events of, uh, on earth of human beings. But they needed to cover all their bases, and so there was this one altar dedicated to a God that they perhaps forgot or never got to know his or her name. And Paul uses the opportunity to take that altar, that uh, desire on their part, and to lead them to the truth, which was, uh, you have all these other uh, shrines, which are lovely, Paul says, they're beautiful shrines, but this altar here is a particularly good one, because let me tell you about the unknown God. It's a God you don't worship, and you should, because in the end, it's the only God, the, uh, the one God, uh, who came to us in human form, not just in human form, but who joined our human race in the person of Jesus. Uh, that appealed to them and to their sensitivities. You know, the Greeks were lovers of wisdom, philosophers, and this made sense to them, all these gods, stories, but here was this one real God that uh, Paul was talking to them about. Of course, he lost them all when he spoke about the resurrection, because uh, the Greeks thought this body to be but a burden to be carried, that the true self was found in the soul, in the immortal soul, and the body was meant to be shed. It was uh, a piece of garbage. Uh, so many scoffed, but many said, no, 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 we, we want to hear more. We want to hear more. Come back and tell us more. Uh, that's really the heart of today's gospel, is it, in telling us more. Uh, when Jesus uh, was about to leave his disciples, uh, he didn't hand them the complete book. He didn't give them the catechism of the Catholic Church. 
him. He said, there's way too much for you to grasp now. Uh, so I will send you the Spirit, the one that is the gift of the Father and I to you. And that Spirit will both testify to me and lead you to the truth. And over the course of the last 20 centuries, we've been being led into that truth, haven't we? In a deeper and deeper way. The catechism that we have today is one of those truths. I'm trying to sum up as best as it can in human words uh, the mystery of God, the wonder of God's revelation. It's incomplete, it always will be incomplete. And when the new catechism comes out in however many decades or, or years, uh, it will try to again incorporate more of that truth. And we have been led to greater truth, haven't we? The New Testament is one of those truths that we've been led to. It wasn't present in the day of Paul, was it? But there it is, the Spirit led us to write down these words, and not only to, for us to write them down, but to realize that they were the words that God was inspiring. Uh, our belief in the Trinity, one of those early teachings, but so much more. So many things we take for granted these days. Our understanding of how Christ is present in the Eucharist. Uh, our teachings about Mary, uh, her conception, her assumption, and all in between, and what important part she plays in the uh, history of salvation, of our redemption, and, and, and so much more. I couldn't possibly begin to, to mention all the things, that the truths that we've been led to. Uh, but the great joy is that there's even more to come. There's more to come. The Holy Spirit's going to lead us always into a deeper truth. And the deepest truth of all, that we find God again in our life here. That each of us is led as well by that Spirit to do the good, to carry out what God desires us to do in our lives. And to that, as the disciples said, we say, yes. Shall we pray? Once again, we pray for the Church of God, especially the Church that's waiting still. For our elect, our candidates for full initiation, our youngsters desiring both First Communion and Confirmation, that as they continue to hunger for these the sacraments of initiation, that we might hunger and thirst with them, that we might assist them with our prayer and with our faithful witness. We pray to them. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who lead us in public office, our own elected officials, those who lead peoples throughout the world, that they may seek the good of all God's human family as they together seek to deal, to solve this problem of our pandemic. For cooperation, assistance, and understanding among peoples and nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked us to pray for them, the needy, the, the poor, the lonely, the disenfranchised, the marginalized, for those who are unemployed, those who are especially isolated totally during these days, quarantine. And of course we lift up especially the sick, those who tend to them, and all those who risk their health and their lives in essential ministries for us. And today in a special way for Jennifer Petrillo, who has asked us to remember her at this Mass in a special way, for her needs and intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, we place before our God those who have gone before us in death. especially those who have led us in the faith, who have nourished us with their witness of love and hope and faith. And for all the founders and benefactors of this parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I invite you now to lift in your own hearts the prayers that you have, and to especially lift to God those that have been entrusted to you by others.
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, through the intercession of St. Bernardine of Siena, the lover of St. Joseph, hear the prayers that we bring to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Pray now, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. 
And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of her glory as they acclaim. <clears throat> sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gregory John our Bishop, his brother Bishop Bernard and Joel, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, with your spirit. Father. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself wholly to you. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. people